my name is Randy Packer. I'm up here, uh, um, you know, I'll lead off this talk with uh, Ken uh, Devine here. But everybody that uh, participated in this particular session is listed up there on the, on the slide. Uh, so Craig and um, uh, uh, from Microsoft, James and Sumia from uh, Snapcrafters, uh, Oliver and Ken, uh, I, I did you backwards, sorry, um, uh, from Canonical and myself and my colleague Jeff uh, from DreamWorks all participated in this session. Uh, as I said, um, my name is Randy Packer and I am a senior manager at DreamWorks. I lead our efforts in rendering and shading uh, AI and ML and large farm compute. And our topic today is called Shooting for the Moon Ray. Uh, our production path tracer Moon Ray, which we open sourced uh, two years ago. Uh, before I actually get into the details of that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about how we got here. Uh, so two years ago, we got invited uh, to the Ubuntu Summit in Riga, Latvia. And from there, we met a lot of great people, a lot of great engineers in Microsoft, Canonical, and Snapcrafters, and others. And it was through talking with the people in the open source community that we started thinking about, hey, what about a snap uh, for Moonray? And lo and behold, two years later, we are here. So. Uh, hacking away together. I'm going to start off with a brief introduction to Moonray, and then we'll delve uh, right into why we did this and our results. So to start off with, Moonray, in addition to being a high-end production path tracer, includes a collection of layerable production shaders as well as a suite of tools to perform regression tests, visualize light paths, and shader attributes along with the cloud computation framework for local and distributed rendering, a Hydra delegate to plug into Hydra-compatible digital content creation tools, and more. If you saw Antonia's presentation yesterday on redefining GPU innovation uh, through software and methodology at Bolt Graphics, he gave a great overview of what a path tracer like Moonray is, so I'm not going to cover that again. Um, but in general, as an MCRT renderer, Moonray emulates real-world light transport as accurately as possible. Uh, at least when we want it to, because as an animation studio making feature films, uh, we like to bend the rules a lot. So Moonray can render images that are photoreal. This is a render. Uh, the glass on the left is rendered, the one on the right is real. And I wanted to show these examples to contrast with all the other images that you've seen and you will see in this presentation, which are also renders from Moonray, but from our films and thus are highly stylized. And the reason I wanted to contrast that is because I have been asked, can Moonray do photo real? Yes, it most certainly can. There are a wide variety of businesses and use cases for a renderer like Moonray. Uh, it's, I think, long known now that, for instance, if you look at digital publishing, the IKEA catalog is not photographs. They are all renders. They are all 3D scenes that they developed and built a library of 3D objects around as an example. Today I'm going to talk specifically about our use in animation. Moonray is, I would say, battle tested. It's under active development and in use at DreamWorks for our upcoming and recent feature films such as The Wild Robot and Bad Guys 2. Where does a path tracing renderer like Moonray actually fit into a feature film production pipeline at DreamWorks? Here you can see the various departments involved in the process, and while not strictly always linear, there is a certain flow to upstream departments handing over to downstream departments. Now clearly there is one, stop, one spot that absolutely needs to be there that is rendering or capturing all the final frames that make up our movies. That's highlighted with the green arrow. However, rendering happens in many departments during the course of the show as artists iterate and refine their work over the course of the production. This is just to give you an idea of the kind of data that we render. It is a lot for one film. Any given film that we do uh, produce takes about an average of four years from storyboard to final frame. And we typically have about four films in production at any given time at various stages of their production. Uh, in terms of complexity, this is an example from The Wild Robot, which we released last year. Uh, we spend a lot of effort to make very, very uh, rich, captivating films. 
And so the scenes that we do render at DreamWorks can be very, very large. Larger than you might fit on a discrete GPU, for instance. So let's continue. We currently provide build scripts for CentOS 7, Rocky 9, and Mac OS uh, to our open source community. Each repository can be built separately by invoking CMake with the root of the repository as the source path. This requires that CMake be configured so that it can find all of the libraries and tools that are needed by a particular repository that you are building. While this is a flexible system to integrate Moonray into an existing or new graphics pipeline, this is also my slide to demonstrate our motivation as to why we want to snap Moonray. Basically, I'm trying to convince you that having a Moonray installer with this scary set of uh, text is a good idea. Why? Not everybody is trying to integrate Moonray into a pipeline. And because the build investment time can be as simple as running the build and succeeding, or it can be quite complex, wrestling with different environments, and or dependency versions, and having to troubleshoot issues along the way. DreamWorks itself does have a very specific and tailored environment for each production, starting from a base foundation of the VFX reference platform. As such, we may not always have the expertise nor the resources to troubleshoot configs in environments that we don't have nor use, which we do see examples of this from the community from time to time. That covers my motivation. I'm going to hand it over here to Ken on building a snap. OK, yeah, so snapping Moonray. God, I really love these colorful slides that mm -hmm. DreamWorks provides. Much more exciting than mine. Uh, sorry. Um, so yeah, as, as Randy mentioned, you know, the motivation here for building it as a snap is the current deployment model is really building it from source. And it's a very complex code base. Um, so, you know, as a snap, they can, they can guarantee a reproducible type of environment, right? Once it's built into the snap, it brings all the dependencies along with it. They're all versioned. They know what's in it. Um, and it's super easy to install. Like, they can go to a machine, snap install, open Moonray, and they're up and running. Um, for at, at the time when they need to render it, they can also control exactly what revision they're using. So if there's been a new version released since, you know, they rendered a previous scene, somebody could actually switch back to the older revision in order to use the same version of the tool. Um, lots of flexibility and be able to go backwards and forwards and, you know, change versions that they're running with. Um, also, very tight control over what libraries are included in, in the snap itself because the snap does bring along all the dependencies. Um, uh, Open Moonray has very specific version requirements because they follow the VFX reference platform, which there's a working group that defines all the specific versions, what version of Qt, what version of this library, what version of this library. That's the standard, and those things are typically mapped actually to a Rocky release, not an Ubuntu release. So we can bundle all those things in the snap and have the exact environment that their engineers expect for compatibility. Um, so what were some of the challenges? You know, some of the challenges was this code base was really designed to be built on Rocky, not Ubuntu. So the versions are different. Um, it's very, very specific versions of things too and lots of references to external Git repositories. So it had to build a lot of things from source to pull everything together. Um, and lots of domain knowledge. Um, I am not an expert in the space. Um, having, having access to uh, DreamWorks folks here this week was very helpful. Uh, we did a, a spent a Wednesday uh, doing a little hackathon. We had a few snap crafters here, a um, couple guys from uh, DreamWorks. Having us all in the same room together, we knocked it out in a few hours on Wednesday, which was fantastic. Um, which brings us to this slide. It is now published in the Snap Store, um, works. It will eventually be transferred to the Open Moon Ray project kind of thing as a publisher. Right now it's a holding place published as me. Um, but it was a successful uh, little hackathon that we did. Um, and it works quite well. I've tested it myself on Ubuntu 2404, 2510, and Rocky 10, which they support Rocky 9. So I knew they would test it on Rocky 9. Um, but yeah, it works. And I'll hand it back over to you. Yes. So you're doing the windows part, right? That's fantastic. Did, but, yeah. oh, okay. Um, I'm now looking at the time. 
I moved really fast, so we're going to have a lot of time for questions here. <laughs> um, so just to, a little bit repeating what Ken said, I, it, in a single day it took us to build the Snap, and we also, as he said, successfully tested on two flavors of Ubuntu, as, along with we tested it on Rocky 9, Rocky 10, and Windows Subsystem for Linux. And thanks to the Snap, we are able to leverage our existing and continued investment at DreamWorks on Moonray and deploy to multiple systems, an example of which I'm going to show on WSL. So here's the basic command to run Moonray on WSL. We specify openmoonray.gui to launch the snap, and we give it a scene to render from the local Windows path. In this case, we're rendering a glass of water, or a scene with a glass of water, uh, created by an artist named Axel and curated by Benedict Bitterly on his rendering resources website. In, in this uh, little demo, you can see Moonray's interactive viewport running on Windows and orbiting the camera around the 3D scene. I want to give a thanks to Craig uh, at Microsoft who participated in our hackathon yesterday and for creating this uh, short demo. And my final slide, I just want to end with a little further note on open source. So DreamWorks has had a long commitment to open source. We've had open sourced OpenDDB and Moonray uh, and, and others. And if you, I, I don't know if people are aware of what OpenDDB is. It's a, uh, a, a description <laughs> format for volumetric rendering uh, that we released, uh, let's see, about 15 years ago. And if you've seen a movie in the last 15 years that had smoke, fire, water, particle destruction, or the like, you've almost certainly seen OpenVDB in action. In fact, it got such a tremendous uptake uh, after we released it uh, that within a year, the developers of that library uh, had won a, an Academy Sci Scientific uh, Technology Award, SciTech Award. Um, and it's continued uh, to progress. They've done lots of amazing stuff with it since. Uh, those developers have now won their second SciTech Award. So pretty exciting thing. Uh, we do believe in the strength and the resilience of the open source community, and we do hope that Moonray excites our community and allows the code base to grow stronger. Uh, we've established and we continue to develop partnerships with academia, companies, and individuals. We love the sense of engagement and accomplishment in the com community. We are, in fact, tool builders. One of the neatest things about the job is not just building the tool itself, but seeing it put to use, and particularly seeing it put to use in ways that we never dreamed of. Uh, artists can do amazing work, and we often find ourselves surprised and delighted in the ambitious looks of our films. It's, you know, personally quite stunning to think that they made something with such beautiful imagery and emotions using the tools that we built. We take pride in seeing what people do with our tools in the graphics community. So our motivation to open source was why not share and expand that? It extends not just to the artists, but to the engineers and the overall tool building community out there. And that is our call out for contributors. We are at DreamWorks, we're a Linux shop, we're adhering to a specific set of software versions in the VFX domain, yet we don't feel like we need to own the entirety of Moonray, its plugins, nor its variants for a wide set of potential uses. Others are and should be experts in the many diverse areas that a renderer can be used. So please reach out if you'd like to get involved with the project. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time and attention, and especially thanks to Maro for his excellent leadership, collaboration, and getting us all together.